Thank you for tuning in to the Natty News Daily Podcast. This episode is brought to you in part by our sponsor, Core Nutritionals. You can check out corenutritionals.com for all your supplement needs and use code Natty News Daily at checkout to save 20%. Enjoy the episode. What's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of Natty News Daily. We've got a special guest on, a client of mine, my fourth best friend, up from sixth last year, Ural Jones. How are you, my friend? Not too bad. Doing good. Doing good. I love how he kept a straight face that whole time. <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get a grin out of him by the end of the episode. <laughs> you need to feed him more, Leroy. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, hold up here. So for those that maybe don't know, uh, Ural and I have been working together for a couple of years now. This was his second season. So just a couple of weeks now post 2023 season, um, we hit the stage in 2021, took some time away to improve, come back this year and went a three for three win streak, obtaining some overalls, obtaining some pro statuses. It was a good time. So yes, sir. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Dan and James kind of run this because it'd be kind of weird me just bragging about your all the whole time. So mm-hmm. uh, one of you two can, can kick this off. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Let's dive into it. I think that the first thing that like popped into my mind when I knew we were going to interview him was I want to know, I, w- I want to get the nitty gritty on Leroy a little bit. I want to know from your first prep to your recent prep, were there any strategy changes? Were there any like tweaks in like positioning or, you know, kind of, because obviously as coaches and I know all three of us and I kind of know where this answer is going to go, right? Like we're all constantly refining and trying to learn and, and do better each time with our athletes. Right. So how did that like present for you guys? Want me to go? Either way. Either oh way. yeah. Uh, I'll lead, I'll lead on this one. So <laughs> Okay. So at, from, from this year to previous, um, we started around a similar body weight. Um, so for example, Ural, we got up to like the mid one eighties, which is kind of where he started his 2021, I think was the last season. So 2021 started, but we didn't have any experience working together prior to that. So basically once we started yeah. working together, it was like, all right, we're, we're prepping mm-hmm. this time around. Obviously we have you know, now years of working together under our belt. So we got back up to 185 during his off season, but it was a totally different look when it came to prep. We actually similar to what I did when I competed last year is we came from 185 to 175. Um, so your last season was a low of 147. So basically 40 pounds over stage weight was where the off season peaked. I didn't want to start that far away. So we come down 10 pounds, kind of held that mid to late 170s, then entered prep from the first show was, I think, 26 weeks, if I remember correctly, um, which kind of, Uh, yeah, yeah, 26 weeks from the first show, which was the last week of March, um, which was an average of a pound, pound and change a week. Um, And then over, we had a four week period of him competing. So he had two shows back to back and then, or it might've been five, five or six weeks actually. Cause we had two weeks in between the second and third show in which he came down. Um, I think we hit that 147 ish for the first show, but then by the last show we were down like 142, 143. Um, so we came in uh, a bit tighter, but you know, and this is where a lot of people watching, like don't let the scale dictate your success because you're all came in, you know, on paper, four pounds lighter, but the physique, you know, not only from a conditioning standpoint, being four pounds lighter than his last season, but from a muscularity standpoint, the the muscle that was added in that time, it was probably, you know, a five or six or seven pound differential, but people would just look at the scale number, right? So that's kind of how things went this time around in contrast to last year mm-hmm. or last season. Right. Your turn, Ural, and then I got a follow up question for you. Any any thoughts like based off that, like differences that you definitely felt from this prep? Yeah, I think this prep went a lot better than the last one. Uh, like at first, I wasn't really seeing changes myself until Leroy starts sending me pictures after a few months, and I'm looking at it like, oh, holy shit, it is uh, we're really dialing it in this time. But this year. 
you know, we were able to beat our last last year's package, which I was really, really happy about. And coming yeah. in, uh, doing what we did this year was great. Yeah, yeah. And two, just to kind of add on, like, you know, Ural in 2021 hit a sticking point. His body started to fight us once we were getting to, like, sub 160. So that was mid to late 150s. And I remember us, I remember saying to you, like, this is where we, we stalled last time. I'm interested to see if it's going to happen again, because no two preps are the same. And sure enough, it, it, it pretty much did almost predictably. Once we got that first 10 to 15 off, his body was like, meh, I'm kind of happy here. And, and we had to push, right? Like you were, you were sub 2000 calories for, for a, you know, relatively long time, you know, considering the length of the prep. But, you know, I think that is where people get hooked on this, like, I need to eat a certain amount of this or do this little or do this less cardio. At the end of the day, what do we got to do to get the result we want? And, and you know, one thing I'll say about Euro is he's, he's robotic about it, right? I tell him what to do and he'll do it, right? There's no questions. Like, you know, if he, if he has a question, it's, it's about like, okay, how do, I, how do you want me to do this? Not even like questioning why he's doing it, but just how do I do it effectively? Right. So if it's a nutritional change or if it's like a cardio, you know, what do you want me to do it at a certain time, at a certain length, at a certain intensity? Like, what is the exact parameters you want this done in? And I'll do it. And I think that and again, it speaks to his results he got where it's like, OK, what do I need to do to get here? I'm going to just do that. If it's eating a little bit less. OK, if it's doing a bit more cardio. OK, no questions asked. And we do that. Yeah. So it, it sounds like from a structural standpoint, the big difference, you know, started maybe a little bit leaner, right? So you had that pre-prep positioning phase. Yep. Would you say that you're all, yep. would that, did that translate to like a, a large difference in fatigue or recovery or energy levels? Like, did you notice a change in that beyond just being able to get maybe a little bit leaner in the same amount of time? No, when I was just holding around at 175 before we actually fully kicked it off, I was actually pretty good. My strength mm -hmm. was a lot better here than it was last year. Cause I know last year my strength was, uh, <laughs> it was going down. I was getting closer and closer, but this year I was able to, I was able to actually hold it pretty strong yeah. towards like maybe kind of went slightly went down, but not as much as it did last year. What do you think yeah. made that difference? I think actually my body's starting to get used to doing all this, uh, all the bodybuilding portion on it, just uh, the nutrition, you know, taking my training a lot more serious than what I did last year. Well, I took it serious last year, but a lot more serious this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think when that... you say serious, more intentional, is that, is that kind of like just <laughs> your processes were more yeah. efficient or, or were you, you know, not missing sessions or, or what? Yeah. Can you clarify that? Yeah. Just not missing curious, sessions. Yeah. You know, I was kind of, I was, you know, asking for advice for training. I was really like, uh, mostly just going to the gym training on my own. Um, this year I actually, I actually got to get some good sessions in with him as he was doing his cut when he was doing his shows. So me just, um, learning how to, get that intensity and how to actually how to push myself towards where I need to go kind of helped me out this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think too, just, just with, with this being your second prep, right. You just know, you know what to expect, right? Like for someone that hasn't prepped before, you don't know what's coming, right? Like, and you know, once that fatigue hits, like if it's your first time going through a prep and you're getting to those low levels of like energy, it's hard to sometimes get out of that and just, you just kind of live there where I say, I think with you and just seeing you on a regular basis, like you were, you were just more, like you said, your body was used to it. You're like, Oh, this is how I feel now, but I don't, I don't need to feel low all the time. I can bring yeah. myself out of that. And, and I think, and this is something I learned from my coach is like the mental aspect of it, of prep. Like so many people will just, as soon as they get into those, like, slight depths of prep where they're just getting that those sprinkles of feeling like shit they're just like oh i'm just gonna get weak now i'm gonna be tired 24 7 blah 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 blah. and if like you tell yourself that then you will 
right? But you know, I've told I've told every client this. Like, I told myself last prep, I'm gonna I refuse to get weak. Like, I won't let it happen. And like, it's gonna happen eventually. But like, do I need to feel like garbage for 12 weeks? No. Like the last three or four, maybe. But like with your all, like you know, there was still like really good numbers in the gym for. 85 90 percent of prep right it wasn't until those last like kind of here we go man especially the last like four weeks where you were basically in stage condition give or take but prior to that i think you were just smarter at prepping it was you, you're better at it yeah yeah i'd be curious i'd be curious to hear what was your um what was your training background and history prior to working with leroy right because the statement you said there was you got to work with them like in person, see that different level that you could achieve with the intensity of the training, right? And that's something that I want to dive into a little bit. I have a follow up to it. So like coming into this relationship, you know, coach client, were you still, were you doing bodybuilding? Was it more powerlifting? Was it just kind of like recreational lifting? Yep. Yeah, uh, it was recreational lifting. I started in, first time I ever stepped in the gym was in high school. That's when I was, uh, when I joined my high school wrestling team. You know, we hit the gym maybe two or three times a week, something like that. Um, never really trained legs. It was all top, maybe a little <laughs> bit of legs. Uh, then I joined the military right after high school. Like I was like maybe two weeks out of high school, went into the military. And <laughs> that's where the real, well, the good training started. And, uh, you know, after my first deployment, uh, I got back from Afghanistan. Uh, you know, I met up with a few buddies and uh, just start going to the recreational, going to the gym there. Mostly just trying to get yourself bigger, stronger, you know, just like the regular stuff or whatnot. Uh, you know, I really didn't I train legs maybe like once, once a week here or there. And that was all through 20, 2006 to 2011. Mm -hmm. you know hit on here there okay so but what go ahead now say again or just, go ahead i interrupted you oh yeah <laughs> i'll get you know actually when I, I when i got out the military decided to go to college and then i really start you know lifting there uh i had somewhat of a weird nutrition just you know following stuff online uh nothing really really set like I have now, mm -hmm. but, um, and then I met, that's when I met Leroy. I told him, you know, that's when I was getting a little bit, a little bit chubbier <laughs> and during COVID. <laughs> and I say, you know, I'm really thinking about stepping on stage or just try it out once or whatever. And then, uh, you know, I think it was like a couple of weeks later, I said, let's, you know, let's kick it off. And here we go. Mm -hmm. Also to yeah. note, he wanted to do men's physique at the beginning. I, I refused. <laughs> <laughs> no that's not yeah. you that's not you <laughs> um yeah so the reason i ask it you have an extensive training history right like you said like 2006 was when you kind of like got out and you were really working so we're talking a long period of time for now what is it you know we'll call it a decade almost right decade down the road you're saying i just now figured out like how to really tap into that intensity i think that's huge for a lot of people to hear because one, it shows that you as an athlete are constantly adapting and the power of that coach client relationship, if it's a good relationship, but two, that there's so much more that we can learn. And like the length of time that we've been doing this really has no bearing on our like long-term like potential, right? Like you can do a lot of bad stuff for a long period of time and just say, Oh, I've been lifting for 10 years. Like this is my max natty potential. Like if you've been doing it wrong, it doesn't matter. Right. Not saying that you were doing it wrong, but just that you can always learn something new and there's always like more potential to be given if you're open to refining what you're doing. Right. Completely agree with that, yep. James. Yeah. That was, I picked up on that. That was one I wanted to like harp on here a little bit. That's my soapbox for the day. I so. will just, yeah. <laughs> I would just reiterate that a hundred times. And yeah. I, I think some people can get arrogant and say, oh, I've been lifting for 10 years. I know what I'm doing. And, mm -hmm. Never change anything. Oh, yeah, I can it's like, yep. I can it wasn't me. I didn't know what the hell I was. Doing. I was just <laughs> lifting, just. To lift. I think that's common, though, right? Like you know, someone like yourself, who who 
you know, what, 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 like very, very casually educated on bodybuilding, you know, you were the guy that's like, okay, well, chest today, I'm going to go in and do blah, 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 blah. Back today, I'm going to go in and do blah, 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 blah. And the last, you know, three years of structure has net you probably 10 times the results in the last decade. Right. And that's just comes down to like effective programming and, you know, more intelligent training and obviously cranking up intensity and eating in the manner that you need to, right. Like just kind of diving into that bodybuilding lifestyle, but, but a hundred percent, like, like James said, you know, you can train for X amount of time and then all of a sudden you have a fraction of that time, but it's used more effectively. You're going to get probably better results. Yeah. yeah. And I think that the, the intent of training and the efficiency of training is huge, right? Because everyone thinks they train hard, right? No one goes in and says, yeah, like I, I train like a weakling or I, you know, I'm not, you know, if you're a bodybuilder or even like recreational bodybuilder, right? Like we all think we train hard, but if you're doing 30 sets on a muscle, what is that training hard, right? Because you're going to be gassed after the first eight, nine, 10, right? So that proper training, I think almost like goes hand in hand with it, right? When you have that proper structure in place, it allows you to tap into that next level and like actually see where your strength is and see where the intensity is, right? Like I know if I was doing 10 by 10 on squats, you're not going to see me grinding those reps that I do now. And I think that's huge for people. So and I'm sure some of that is what you kind of saw, Earl, when you started lifting with Leroy, you know, we see how he works out and it's, it's pretty intense. It's pretty hard, but it's smart. And then seeing someone else do that and mimicking yourself. And then you saw the results come from that. I've sent that man. Yeah. I've sent that man puking outside my garage more times than I can count. <laughs> yeah. And I can Always. count pretty high. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. So Leroy, let's, let's dive into the future plans. What do you have in, well, let's, you know what? Well, I'll rewind myself a little bit because I want to know what Euro wants to do because I don't want to step on stage against him. So I'm going to plan myself away from him uh, as well <laughs> as pretty much every, everyone on this podcast. I, I want to compete with on a recreational level, not on a competitive level. Um, probably I'm assuming recovery diet, right? Jumping into some larger calories, right? Yes, no? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Good. How are you feeling post-show right now with the the large increase in food? You feel like you're getting a little bit of a rebound going? Oh yeah, I'm feeling good right now in the gym. Yeah, Starting, yeah. Uh, once you get that fuel get back in you, adventurous with the weights now. <laughs> so I'm starting to loving it. Yeah, yeah, that's where it gets fun, right? So what's uh what's the the consensus on things to work on, things to improve on? Is it just overall, you know, bigger, leaner, harder, that kind of stuff? Definitely more triceps. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I'm, I'm, kidding. Tricep. I'm kidding you got more triceps than all of us um now we need to get for 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 him i think it's uh it's still a lot of what we did last off season you know like that upper like shelf like delt arm delt chest for mm -hmm. ural is is a strong right it was strong from day one it's still strong now um you know we brought up quads especially like now seeing stage photos from this year to to 2021 the the effort we put in his leg training really really paid off i think now it's continuing with that but still like the back of the body which was which was the same thing i needed to do is just especially with his front and side shots being so dominant if we can if we can finish rounding things out from all angles it'll be it'll be good so right now like um, chest is getting a little bit of work delts and arms are, you know, pretty much just like what can keep them right now, but then back, back and legs is getting, getting hammered pretty good. Um, oh, yes, what sir. part, what part of the back everything or. Yeah, I think like <clears throat> it's, it's that low lat right like if we can just kind of slap some clay on kind of that lower like if this is if his shoulders are here it's just that lower lat area um and then like i want to i want to get some good numbers up on like a hip hinge for him this year so like some kind of deadlift that we run with for a year or two 
um, just to thicken up that lower back will be good. And then uh, like hammies. Say mid back. Yeah, like basically like that mid mid section mid section and lower section of your back. If we can really thicken that up, um, like when you hit your back double, the top is is thick. Like there's lots of slabs there. But then that lower part, like when you and I were posing together and we, we hit that lat spread from the back, if we can bring that, yeah. that out and thicker, it'll finish it and it'll finish it good. Oh, yeah. So what are you guys doing? Because you, you mentioned deadlifts. What, what are you doing for that lower lat portion? Are you doing some iliac type pull downs or I, I say that seriously. No, 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 I know. I'm just smiling. Yeah. <laughs> I know that has a stigma, but whatever. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you exactly what he's doing. So right now, we've got push, a posterior chain day. So basically from his neck to his calves. We've got a back and delts, chest and arms, and then a full leg day. So back's getting hit twice. Legs are getting hit twice. Um, and then push stuff is sprinkled across twice but like volume comparatively is lower. So on his posterior day, uh, hamstrings, we're running with stiff leg deadlifts right now. Um, but I definitely will probably want to get like him RDLing four or five plates in probably the next year. Um, barbell rows, machine rows. Um, so like this is like mid back stuff. And then, yeah. um, We've got a neutral grip pull down, which we're doing dual handed right now, but just driving the elbows down. Um, and then actually we just went over this the other day. We have that single arm pull down braced against the bench. Iliac. Yeah, using using, using Iliac, a cable, whatever it is. Using a cable or using like the hammer strength? Cable. The cable. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then, from kind of across your body. Yep. Yeah. And then so that's yeah, on back yeah. day. Um yeah, that's kind of the doing main. that twice a week that movement because you said I mean you you said, said specifically lower lat. Well, so I have that one, and then I have like that neutral grip where he's not he's staying kind of locked into that portion. Yeah, yeah, but you have two two back sessions, though, right? Yeah. Do you yeah. have it on both days then? Those two movements are separate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They're all one. Okay. How do you feel like your recovery is right now? You're all with that amount of frequency on those body parts. Um, I'll say a lot better. Legs is kicking his ass right now. <laughs> yeah, they're still sore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll say everything's feeling a lot stronger. Um, I'm feeling a lot of movements. The movements are going really well this time. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to, you know, get the that full stretch in within uh within every rep so that's actually helping out a lot because i know i always had like a, a lot of tightness in my right side of my lats uh this prep mm -hmm. and uh, you know starting to go see my R my rmt to get all that worked out and uh starting to feel pretty 100 percent good good yeah not not long after the show so it's good to see signs that you know recovery is going well you're getting back into some like productive training already, right? Because that's just going to give you more time to grow in the future. Yeah. No time wasted. Mm -mm. No, no, not at all. Yeah, I was, I was wondering oh, how you were going to. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like sometimes, and this is hit or miss, and maybe we can like turn it over and let everyone chat because I feel like we've all done different training at different times. Coming out of that heavy deficit, the heavy diet after the show. I feel like sometimes I go a slightly lower frequency for body parts just to kind of give the recovery a better chance. But again, if you're training well, if it's smart programming, you probably don't have to. And that might just be something that I've tended to do. Oh, I did that. And uh, as soon as he gave me my plan, like the first week and a half, I did come in a little bit lighter just so I can fill everything out. But then as soon as you start getting uh, increasing those calories, and then the following week came, I felt a lot stronger. Well, it's feeling a little bit more stronger than what I can. And sometimes I decide when I want to push myself, <laughs> uh, I make sure I don't want to cheat myself, I guess we would say. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think like, I don't know. There's, there's, there's an asterisk beside, beside everything, right? Like when you are coming out of a show, like I, once I started throwing food back in for me, and I think you're all can probably echo this, like within a week or two, I was, I was feeling quite good again. Right. Like you kind of take that week or two of introduction back in the gym and getting weight back under you, let your joints reacclimate to heavy weight again. But couple you know, Kai Kai's cookies. Yeah. A couple cookies, whatever. Right. <laughs> but whew, like, if you're feeling good, you know, let's go hit, hit the ground running. Right. Like I don't need four five, six weeks of like a recovery diet and blah, 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 blah. Keeping, you know, lots of reps in reserve and all this kind of stuff. Like by all means, if you're still feeling trash, then, then yeah, take that accordingly. But you know, for myself for Euro, like, two or three weeks post show, if we're ready to go and, and you're like, man, I could probably throw another like 40 pounds on the bar right now. Well, hell yeah. Let's, let's go for it. Let's, let's, let's do it. Why are we, why are we playing this recovery game? If, if I'm good to go. Nice. Dan, any, any insights into that? I feel like that is a somewhat counter to the way that you do things coming out of show, or at least I know maybe your symptoms kind of stuck around a little bit longer than that. Yeah. It's, it's more of a symptom thing for me. I mean, no, I, 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 uh, you know, I like to see decent progressions. I mean, maybe not 40 pounds of the bar in one session, but, um, no, I, I actually do seem to experience a bit like of a, almost like a, a rebound In fact, I know that that, so, you know, a term that's controversial, but, um, almost like unrealized, um, hypertrophy, uh, since you were just in a deficit so long that, uh, at least by like the right around like the six week post show mark. I mean, that's general, if I'm not, not going to hold it to, but, uh, I noticed that like, wow, I'm already in PR territory. And then like, I really just continue to, you know, from six to 10 to 12, I'll just get on a really good run. So, um, okay. Yeah. yeah no i mean i don't like to you know i i like to keep my foot on the gas all the time so <laughs> there we go there we go all right so we talked about the future plans for the physique what are the actual timeline what's your goal you with the sport right so and before we go into that remind me three wins what federations were they and kind of is your intent to follow one of those federations you going elsewhere you know what's the future look like for you I'll say the first victory was the Natural Muscle Association. Uh, that one was our uh, our starter wow. start of the season, warm up of the season, which was pretty went pretty well. And then we uh, went towards oh, it was a week after, <laughs> which was pretty good. Then uh, then our second one was uh, OCB, which mm -hmm. that one I was pretty you know really really pumped extremely pumped to do because I, <laughs> I wanted to earn that pro card, which mm -hmm. we did, which mm -hmm. that went very well. And we finished off uh, the Co uh, the Coburg up in uh, Canada, uh, Naturals, mm -hmm. uh, for the CPA. That one went uh, very well. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a pretty good damn competition there, yeah. which I love. I love that. That's exactly what I want is competition to get me up and going. Yeah. Did you get your OCB card in the mail yet? No, I'm still waiting. <laughs> Wait till you get it. They're they're nice. Yeah, they are pretty. Sick. I actually oh, yeah. have one. They oh, the the new one. I actually have it right here. It's it's actually a metal card. It's super it's nice. Sure it's a the 20 year anniversary one. It, it's super nice. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, Plug yeah. for them. I I appreciate yeah. that those little touches, uh, professional yeah. touches. As much as I've you know said things about the OCB. I call balls and strikes. So, there you go. so <laughs> anyway, so you did the so it's NMA OCB CPA. Do you feel like you're gonna kind of chase like the pro ranks and like truly compete in the pros of one of those, or are you like, yeah, what's the next competitive season look like for you? Uh, say we're gonna next time we hit the stage will be uh, 2025. Okay. Uh, most definitely. I've already been looking at shows for the OCB for my pro debut. I got a mm -hmm. couple in mind, but uh, that's something we will have to sit down and discuss and uh, plan out. Most definitely, fall or spring, probably fall. 
He's got the Orton yeah. Cup on, on his mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like it. I yeah, love it. Going in how the competition is, and um, really hoping to really get in that competition. That's what I. That's what I want. I want to. I want to earn it. I don't want it easy. So that's a big thing there. Uh, was looking at other federations, you know, just to get my toes wet and nose. But that's, you know, future plans for us to sit down and talk about. Yep. Okay. I like it. Keeping it a little bit hush hush. <laughs> I'll pry it out of Leroy. <laughs> Whatever show uh, James and Dan are doing, those are the ones yes. who are always jumping in. Seriously, right? Well, that's the thing. Yeah. If I compete 24, I got to compete against Dan. If I compete 25, I got you guys. I'm stuck either way. I'm probably not going to win a pro card, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> 2025, the Team Rollins Avengers are just going to roll up to shows and fuck shit up. <laughs> You're really selling 25 on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we close this out, um, Ural, as now a second-time competitor, please give your best piece of advice for all of the team members competing for the first time this year? Well, I'll tell you something that you already heard over and over again. Trust the process and listen to your damn coach. Yeah, listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, short and simple, but like, I think it's so easy for people to get stressed out with the highs and lows of prep and you know, the, the weeks that the scale doesn't move or the, the days you have the bad workout or, you know, when you don't get the good night's sleep and it gets daunting and you're right, just trust the process, tick the boxes day by day. And, you know, don't, don't look forward to prep being over because you'll miss it as soon as it's done. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was missing it already. As soon as I've seen uh, other age. Yeah. But, uh, mm -hmm. You know, it is what it is. I had my time. It was definitely a good time. Yeah. I'm ready to see my teammates uh, go kick some ass this year for the rest of this year. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you taking time out of your day and coming on and chatting with us. It means a lot. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, you for having me, gentlemen. If people want to yeah. find you, where do they find you on Instagram? At Deniz777. If you can't find me, just look on Leroy page and look at this beautiful face. You'll find that there. <laughs> Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Is. I like All it. All right, people. If you enjoyed this episode, if you want to see more stuff like this, maybe get one of James's clients on or another client of mine or anybody that Dan's working with. If you kind of like this dynamic of, of coach client conversations, let us know. I think it's pretty cool and, and a different insight versus just interviewing someone. Um, obviously we've had a lot of fun having this conversation. So we appreciate you guys for watching. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.